high over Britain, where many of the air battles of the war were fought, ranged the meteors and vampires of the Royal Auxiliary Air Force. Architects, bank clerks, motor mechanics, men from every walk of life man these squadrons, which fly some of the fastest planes in the world. For many of them, these are now routine flights. They are the pilots who tempered their skill in war. But some are experiencing for the first time the thrill of flying in a new age. With the introduction of the jet engine, the task of pilots and maintenance crews became more exciting. They still have a lot to learn about jets, and at weekends, the men of the auxiliary air force are never far from the airfield. Squadrons carry out their flying duties from operational stations. Here they have their headquarters, and function in much the same way as regular air force units. They have training sections, repair shops, all the resources needed to keep high-speed aircraft at frontline efficiency. And to see the standard is maintained, a few regular airmen look after the planes during the week when the auxiliaries are not around. The work of the auxiliary air force covers every phase of flying. Apart from air crew, there are engine fitters, armorers, radar mechanics, and all the members of ground staff. Many of them have seen war service and know the job backwards, yet they still find something to learn. They know it doesn't take long these days to get out of touch with the latest developments in the air. When a squadron's operational, it's an active life. There isn't much time to spare waiting for a kite to be refueled. These men believe that the place for aeroplanes is in the air. And everyone does his best to get them airborne again as soon as possible. At weekends, the shuttle service never stops. As soon as one plane lands, another takes off. And all day long, the whine of jet engines starting up can be heard. Zero. Star one calling. Your position 10 miles north of Margate. Steer 180 for base. Over. Roger D. Listening out. When next you see a plane in the sky, think of these people down in the operations room. They can see it too, right here on these plotting tables. Auxiliary fighter control units are run on the same lines as operations rooms of regular fighter squadrons. Here, men and girls learn the routine of raid reporting, plotting and controlling fighter aircraft. The modern fighter control unit is inseparably tied to jet development. With each new advance in the air, ground control assumes greater significance, and today is in every way as important as the work that goes on on the airfield. Linking the control unit to the aircraft is radar. Without its aid, the job of plotting fast-moving fighters would be almost impossible. Impulses sent out by these aerials locate the aircraft immediately, and its course is traced automatically on the screen in the control cabin. Then, minute by minute, the latest information goes up on the tote. Information not from radar alone, but also from the Royal Observer Corps, who flash their news by telephone, and by teleprinter. Today, the importance of radar to air defense is firmly established. For that reason, the Auxiliary Air Force has given a high priority to this trade, and those engaged in it are given every encouragement to improve their skill. 
But at town headquarters, where much of the auxiliary training takes place, every trade is important. And in the evenings, in addition to all the other activities, lectures on many subjects are always going on. Cylinder, and onto the face of your gas piston, which carries to the rear the unlocking plate rods. This, in turn, pushes back on your... The Meteor 3 aircraft, with which you're all so familiar. The Meteor 3 is now being superseded by the Meteor 4 aircraft, which is the modern uh, jet fighter. And, of course, we have our own... Flame star. The burner is fitted in the forward orifice. Air from the compressor is led... But the life isn't all work. There's the social side. For town headquarters is also the clubhouse, and every member of the squadron is a member of the club. And if you can't find them here, they're bound to be down at the airfield. For training goes on all the time. But the high spot of each year is the summer camp, where for 14 glorious days, the men of the weekend air force work together as a fully operational squadron. These men and women of the Royal Auxiliary Air Force devote their leisure to flying. But underlying the carefree spirit is the knowledge of the part they play in the front line of Britain's air defences.